David Newman's asked, were there tools so a party could aggregate all of the petitions to all candidates so that they could draft responses rather than each candidate being burdened? Uh, yes, uh, it's a good question. Um, so, so basically, I mean, the reason why we decided to um, uh, uh, design the tool so that uh, it was each candidate is because the, the uh, political party system in Argentina is going through um, uh, significant changes. It's a very weak party system. So um, uh, candidates pretty much run their, uh, their digital campaigns, their social media, you know, with um, their specific teams. Um, so even though uh, political parties have, you know, some sort of a like nationwide strategy, um, they pretty much run their campaigns by themselves with uh, community managers, you know, managing their own um, communication. So um, instead of focusing on on political parties where we we may have, you know, one shot, you know, to engage with them and they might say yes or no, you know, uh, <laughs> um, uh, uh, as a political party, we decided, you know, to go with um, uh, important candidates at very strategic um, uh, districts. Um, so, so with that, we have the capacity to escalate a lot, you know, the um, the, um, the profiles, uh, and also to make sure that the uh, critical candidates in the critical districts uh, were able to create a, a profile. Okay, and kind of linked into that um what was the value of doing that kind of proactive engagement with uh with campaigns and candidates versus them doing it themselves are, are more candidates coming to you yes um the, the effect is very is very interesting because um uh it was the first time we were reaching out to candidates uh i mean as leandro said uh, in 2019, we have a total of 140 um, uh, responses. That means that we have also responses from the private sector and also from people that are not candidates, okay? Like like mayors or politicians that were not candidates. Um, so we use this strategy of reaching out during the campaign um, so that now, I mean, we are positioned as a platform that they can engage, you know, with uh, a large amount of people. I mean, it's it, imagine you know that that for for a politician engaging directly with a uh, hundred and fifty thousand you know people that sign a petition that it's targeted to that specific you know candidate or politician is a magnificent you know communication tool. Um, so so no one you know is giving them you know some sort of an audience you know that um, uh, where they can tailor a message that it's cater, you know, to that specific, you know, people that are asking for a specific, you know, change in policy or something like that. So um, now what we are seeing is, uh, and we're changing a little bit the strategy based on the learnings from, from last year, uh, what we are seeing is that on Twitter, um, whenever, I mean, we, they, they, they see that they're mentioned on a petition, they reach out, they reach out to us, you know, to say, how can I respond? Uh, and then that's a way that we have, you know, to sell them the profile on change.org. Great. Okay. Um, over to you, Lucia. Um, how difficult is it? I mean, the pledge tracker, obviously it covers, it covers quite a lot. Um, how difficult is it to link and, you know, to encourage standardization of data on, you know, all of these kinds of things like open contracting, beneficial ownership, et cetera. I mean, is, is that, is that kind of standardization, standardization, sorry, something that you're very interested in, or is it literally just, it's almost, it, it almost doesn't matter as long as they're putting it out in some way. So I guess the fact that, um, that they are actually um, publishing something, it's already important in a way, but I guess that um, as we see from this project, there are many very complex topics that need to be addressed and supported by civil society organizations working on specific spaces. So let's say, so the open contracting partnership or um, open ownership on beneficial ownership. So the more that we can link civil society organizations and other um, um, entities that are supporting uh, this implementation with the government. And the more that high level commitments 
can be trickled down into agencies um, and, and the specific departments can see what is feasible and what is not. Um, I think that's the way forward. I mean, pledge tracking is just a very general process, but then when we get to each specific type of area, so let's say beneficial ownership, it becomes so much more complex because it's not only about creating public registers, it's also about starting with the legislation. If there's yeah. a definition of beneficial ownership, um, if there is, you know, um, a standard way in which this is published, if there's a way of verifying the data afterwards. So obviously these are very complex topics and I cannot talk about all of them, <laughs> of but the more but the more we can link them to the relevant um, organizations working in the field and the more that they can, the governments can learn from these experts, um, I guess that's, that's the way forward, I would say. And just linking into that, I mean, has, has Transparency International actually put any activities in place to increase the kind of civic engagement and, and monitoring of anti-corruption commitments made by their governments? Yes, um, so yeah, of course. So I, I mentioned a few examples, um, but many of the chapters are, are currently working with, uh, with citizens to actually increase engagement on this. So I, I mentioned TI Sri Lanka, um, yeah. for example. Uh, they, they do a lot with citizens. They have recently um, then, you know, put out uh, a storytelling, um, let's say, um, call for proposals where um, actually amateurs can do videos on how corruption affects them and, and how to, for example, engage. Uh, so let's say youth um, engagement on uh, corruption issues or um, also they are working with investigative journalists. Um, so there's many initiatives out there going on in South Africa as well. They try to engage youth participation on the uh, development of the national anti-corruption strategy. So yeah, there are plenty of ways in which they are engaging on specific commitments and linking citizens um, with, uh, the, with the process. Great, thank you very much. Um, again, as ever, more questions than we have time for. I'm very sorry, but thank you so much to Lucia, to Leandro, um, and to Gaston for those incredible presentations once again as we say uh, we'll get all the information out um, once we are back in work tomorrow